I just recently completed a five-day, 50-mile backpacking trip in the Grand Canyon that, as many of you saw, didn't exactly go as planned. I have had a few questions about my gear list, and it's a pretty unique trip in terms of how to pack. So I wanted to showcase everything that I brought on this trip and all 52 pounds worth of my gear and show you what I brought and as well as highlight a few mistakes that I made and what I would do differently. Without further ado, let's break it down starting now. Let's just address the elephant in the room. This trip really didn't go according to plan. As many of you saw, Dan Becker had to get rescued on the North Rim and it was pretty scary. Uh, while there is a whole other video detailing that experience, I really wanted to focus on the gear, what was exceptional, what helped me tremendously uh, accomplish this trip because I did finish the trip, uh, sadly, without Dan. But I did do 50 miles uh, when it was all said and done. And uh, there's definitely some things that I learned, definitely some gear that stood out and made a huge difference to me. And I wanted to share that as well as a few things that I really shouldn't have brought in the first place. First off, I've got kind of a huge array of things here. So I wanted to go through and start with my baseline, my sleep system. That started off with the Durston XMID Pro. The Durston XMID Pro was stellar. I absolutely love this tent. This thing weighs 16 ounces. 17 ounces if you count these steaks that I brought that are my MSR snow steaks that uh, were really helpful because we were backpacking uh, on the North Rim through about 10 feet of snow. But a lot of people have said that the XMID Pro, oh, it's not really a one pound tent because you need trekking poles. And that's true. The trekking poles are extra and they do weigh something. However, for a trip like this, Trekking poles are mandatory and you wouldn't be doing this kind of a trip without trekking poles in the first place. It's factoring in the additional weight that you'd be carrying. So since I'm already carrying the trekking poles, guaranteed for sure, that's a must. Adding this tent with only 16 ounces extra. We both shop at Durston. <laughs> yeah, we both shop at Durston. It's pretty phenomenal. So I had my one pound tent. I took the Nemo Tensor. Uh, insulated sleeping mattress, which is a 4.2 on the R value there. And this is about as light and small as I felt comfortable going, especially being that I was going to be sleeping directly on top of snow uh, on the North Rim. So two nights of the four night trip were spent sleeping directly on the snow. And this thing held up pretty well, although camera guy Jake had this exact mattress that had a massive failure. Nobody else had a foam mattress, which I definitely debated bringing, but because I was bringing so much gear, I opted to not. I kind of risked it, worked out for me, didn't work out for my buddy, kind of it was a freak accident, uh, and it was unrepairable in the field. Durston tent, Nemo tensor, and here to complete my sleep system is the Parsec Zero Degree Sleeping Bag from Thermarest. Together, I was more than comfortable, even though it got down to about 14. I think the coldest it got was, I wanna say 14 or 15 degrees. Honestly, that was a really, a really nice trio. And if you're curious, everything that I brought fit into my 55 liter Mystery Ranch Bridger. So as we go, I'm going to be removing things and uh, throwing it here into my backpack. Give a quick shout out to Mystery Ranch. They are the sponsor of this video. They have been a patron here at Backpacking TV for a long time. Mystery Ranch makes amazing backpacks that are truly durable and the most drop dead comfortable packs on the market. So if you are looking for a great day hiking backpack or a backpacking backpack, make sure that you check out mysteryranch.com. Next, I wanna talk about some really unique elements that are pretty, different for the Grand Canyon. And these are mandatory. These are my traction spikes. And I got these from Hill Sound. Now, if you saw in the video, there is a lot of snow and ice on the trail. And a lot of the trail is in these shaded areas that get the snow gets compacted down through hiking, or maybe there's just dripping running water and then it freezes on the trail. Having traction spikes is an absolute must. I would not feel comfortable at all without these. And then I also brought gaiters. So 
These are also from Hill Sound, and these are awesome gaiters. These are my favorite gaiters I have used so far, and I've used a handful of different brands, but these are, are a little bit bigger, a little bit beefier, so I really like how they zip, um, and the way that they connect. They're very easy to use. Together, they were perfect. If you're just on the south rim, you could probably get away without gaiters, but Traction spikes are an absolute must. We were plunging through some really deep snow. It wouldn't have been safe or comfortable, really, without these. Feet would have gotten soaking, soaking wet. The downside is that this setup does add some weight. These are a little over a pound, and uh, these are definitely less, but together it's probably a pound and a half. And, you know, every ounce counts. I would like to go for maybe something a little bit lighter, but this was a winter trip, so it's pretty unique that we carried this. We actually backpacked with snowshoes, which is kind of crazy to have to haul snowshoes about 18 miles before you even put these on and they're useful. If you're gonna be doing some North Rim winter hiking or backpacking, you pretty much gotta bring some snowshoes, especially for how much snow we had. Had to have them, couldn't have done it without it. What I actually wore for my footwear was a huge point of concern for me because it's such a unique trip. You're back, you're backpacking, you're backpacking through the desert for a huge amount of miles. And so I really did not want to carry boots, like full Gore-Tex winter boots, because of how much I would sweat. And I really wanted to avoid getting some serious blisters. I opted for a low cut Gore-Tex boot and these actually worked quite well. Now, uh, I did develop some blisters, but that was really not the problem with the footwear. It was just the nature of carrying 50 pounds, 52 pounds for so many miles, and eventually your tissue just kind of starts to break down. And uh, all things considered, I was really happy with this decision. Um, I did swap out the normal insoles with these super feet. Uh, insole cushions, and this has been a great decision. I've really liked hiking with these, and I've had very few problems with my feet since doing that. So that was a very good decision. All things considered, I'm really happy with how these have held up. These have been put through the ringer over the last four or five months, and they've been really good, although I am no starting to notice uh, some of these laces are starting to break down a little bit and that is a concern but i have hiked a ton of miles in these and i've been really really happy with these overall let's talk about my cooking and food situation so again i had some debates over what would be the best stove to bring i opted to do this uh, one and a half liter pot from Jetboil because it has these uh, coils on the bottom and I really wanted to have a wider pot that could hold more than a liter for snow melt. Uh, on the North Rim, snow melt was our pretty much exclusive form of drinking water. And I was really concerned about that. So I opted for a system that would be more efficient. So I took the stove off of the Minimo and left the pot stand on. And this pretty much creates a perfect little perch there. Uh, it's very efficient and it was actually really good at being able to melt snow. This ended up being a good decision. It's bulkier and heavier than I would ideally like. I don't recall what stove Dan had. He had a little lightweight stove and uh, a simple pot. And one of the things that I noticed is that when trying to melt snow with his system, it just was not very efficient. It lost a lot of heat to the elements and to the subtle breeze, this became our main water source for the whole group. So that actually was great. Yeah, I, I referenced this in another video that I made. I carried way too much damn fuel. I was concerned that because we were gonna spend two and a half days on the North Rim with uh, everything would be frozen, I was really concerned. I didn't wanna be responsible for the group not having water, for four people not having water. So I totally overpacked my fuel. This is what's left and I still have half. So I could have easily gotten away with just this and still had some leftovers. So I wish 
that I didn't pack so much dang fuel. This is about two and a half pounds of fuel. Uh, I could have cut that in half and I wish I did. Since we just talked about water, that I was melting snow for my drinking water, that was not the only way that I did water. I also brought this Life Straw Peak Squeeze, and this was great for just scooping up water. And I also carried a Nalgene bottle. Some people, like Dan, prefer using smart water bottles. I still stick with the Nalgene. It's kind of old school. I definitely heated up some water, threw hot water in my bottle, stuck it in my sieving bag, and it was very helpful because it was so cold. So I had one more way to carry water. I didn't want the group to run out of water and kind of being in the trip leader role. I opted to carry some extra water. So I brought this Water Cell X from Sea to Summit, which allowed me to carry, I, I didn't have it all the way full. This carries four liters. I pretty much had three liters of water with me um, most of the time. Sometimes I carried a little bit less, or obviously as I was hiking and drinking, uh, it would sometimes go down. But I pretty much left this thing empty, had this thing full, and this thing half full, which left me with usually between two and three liters of water. And I've really liked this system, and it's handy to use, especially when you're hauling water for a group or things like that. So this was great. Carrying five days worth of food can get to be a bit of a challenge. I mostly carried these. This is from Pinnacle. This is the zesty Italian sausage pasta. And this one is my absolute favorite of all time of any dehydrated meal or freeze dried meal. So if you're not familiar with Pinnacle, check them out. Well worth it. And then I brought uh, a good bit of trail snacks. I did a lot of mangoes, apricots, almonds, a whole bunch. And this was pretty much, I had a, a, a lot of food uh, for five days. A few little odds and ends. Some people have been asking about this collapsible cup. This is from Yuko. It's a very lightweight, simple cup. And I have a couple of things from Yuko. They have these uh, spork, spoon, fork, knife, combo that I really like that attaches together. You can use this as a deep spoon for getting out of the bag and not getting food all over your fingers. And it's just been kind of my go-to spork system. I carried a first aid kit for the group. The biggest thing that I used, I added in these glacier gels. What these are, it's kind of like second skin. This is also from Adventure Medical Kits. Now, it is important to note that they don't come with this. But for doing something like the Grand Canyon, these are amazing for blister care. It's kind of like moleskin, except moleskin's like a, fat, like a felt kind of fabric that you stick on your skin. These are much better and I much prefer these. They help with healing and they just are kind of soothing and they really reduce that friction that causes blisters. If you're gonna be doing a long trip, I really recommend those. Welcome to the Grand Canyon. Those glacier gels were so good. Sort of similar, I did have this uh, from Gear Aid, this is just a patch kit. Basically contains a few of these patches. I do recommend carrying something like these patch kits from Gear Aid. Don't have to use them a lot, but I never want to have a failure. Okay, sticking with the kind of theme of some other odds and ends, I brought this knife. This is the Nightshade from Vosteed. I have really liked this knife. Uh, been a great knife for me. I think it's 80 bucks. Um, Big fan of it. And let's see, I had my Zolio satellite communicator. We did have an emergency. Um, as you know, Dan got rescued, but we did have cell, cell phone signal. So I have still yet to use this as an SOS, uh, but it's awesome. I spent, I sent tons of texts uh, throughout the canyon when there was no cell phone reception. So this was very, very handy. This is the LED Lenser Neo 1R. No, not Neo 1R. This is the Neo 5R. So this is more robust, has this back battery pack on it. It can get very bright. I ultimately chose this over the Neo 1R that I have been using because of the duration of the trip. Uh, and because I was concerned that maybe we'd have to do some navigating in the dark which we definitely did a lot. So on any trip that I am gonna be doing or know I'm gonna be doing or likely have some night hiking navigating, I like to have a more robust headlamp. So this has the back battery pack and I had to use this a lot. We did a lot of night hiking and I spent about four hours getting Dan out of the canyon 
and having the ability to have a reliable headlamp that can have a big beam that goes for a long ways for spotting the trail and things like that, that battery will last a long time. Uh, this, this has been my go-to headlamp for big, kind of bigger backpacking trips like this. A couple other random things. I like this. Uh, this is the Eros Down Pillow from Sea to Summit. Pretty much take this on every trip. I, it's a huge fan, makes a huge difference. I sleep great with it. So love having that guy. Super important to have sunglasses. Uh, I carry these, these are Wiley X. They're a sponsor of Epic Trails and they're my favorite sunglasses. Also, I do bring this little hard shell case because my sunglasses without them, they always die. They always just break. So I carry a little hard shell case. You've seen me wearing these in a lot of videos. These are some of my favorite gloves of all time. These are the Hestra Ergo Tactility gloves. I was debating having more heavy duty. These are pretty lightweight gloves. I kind of wanted more uh, heavy duty gloves for warmth, but honestly, these are like wind stopping gloves and just having the ability to block the wind, my hands were completely comfortable. I never had really cold, numb hands that I was concerned about. As you can see, I was wearing these when I had to make that 911 call. So the fact that they can be more interactive and use cell phones and things like that are great. I maintain my dexterity, which I really like. So these are just my favorite gloves. Another thing that I've come to use and really like this is a hiking belt. It's this stretchy belt from Arcade. It just has this buckle clasp. I don't like having belts that are gonna be sitting under my hip belt and create pain points. So it's kind of soft and it's pliable, supple. And uh, once you get the fit kind of dialed in for you, you just kind of stretch it around you and buckle it up and it's great. So this is a go-to hiking belt that I've really come to love. A uh, subtle change that I've made, found it recently, and I'm a big fan. Lightweight synthetic hiking shirt. I also used this Cotopaxi long sleeve um, hiking shirt. Use this a lot, um, especially on the North Rim when I was hiking and moving and in some of the colder temps. I use this, and then some people were asking about this jacket. This is also from Cotopaxi. I loved this thing. It wicks moisture. It's great for when you're, you know, moving and active, but it's still cold. So when it was really snowy and cold, I pretty much hiked in these three layers on top. That was my go-to for the cold stuff. For my hiking pants, uh, I've got these fun, fun hiking pants. These are my favorites. These are the Keb trousers from Fjallraven. And these are great. They're kind of thicker, so they're a little bit warmer and yet they have ventilation here at the hips and even as well down here at the ankles. So the fact that they're kind of on the warmer end for hiking pants, but are really well ventilated, these are like $250 hiking pants, but worth it if you're gonna be doing a lot of hiking. That's what I hiked in here, of course, wool socks. And then I did bring long johns for when we're not hiking for after, after camp and settling in around camp wearing these. Of course, I had a beanie, wool cap, super important. And then last thing for my layers, uh, actually not the last thing, I had my rain jacket too. Um, this is the Cotopaxi Fuego down jacket, very warm jacket. It's not as lightweight as other jackets out there but it is very warm and I like that it's not a super expensive jacket. This was a film shoot for Epic Trails and Cotopaxi is a sponsor. So I was kitted out with a lot of Cotopaxi gear and all of that fit into this. This is the Packstack Pro from Hillsound. I had some camera equipment that was in here too. And then I've got memory cards, lens filters, uh, extra batteries, uh, just accessories for my camera equipment, microphone things that also go in here and it kind of provides some protection. So that's nice. Starting to get pretty full there. On the camera equipment note, a lot of you asked about this as well, but I've started using the Hyperlite camera pod. I think that's the full name, but this is the large version and it fits my DSLR. I have the Canon R5. It fits it perfectly. It's got a good bit of room in there and I really like this. This has been a new thing for me, it's waterproof. And the biggest thing that I like is that I just constantly have access to my camera. If it's in my backpack, I just shoot with my camera, 
you know, 20, 30% less and having that instant access where it's just right there, unzip it, take my camera out. I modified this a tiny bit um, by adding two more. This is what it comes with, it has these clips here. I added two more clips that I added to the straps of my backpack, which meant that it was really easy to just clip these on after I, you know, swing my pack up, clip them on, and I'm ready to hike. A lot of people also ask if it tends to bounce and is annoying. And my answer is sometimes. I found that there's like one particular pace where it bounces. If I'm going slower and if I'm going really fast, my pace is actually, for some reason, it doesn't bounce. Not sure why that is, but that's what I found. Last, uh, I did bring my Grand Trunk 360 degree swivel stool because I love this thing and I've been so hesitant to leave it at home, uh, but I wish that I had left this at home. I failed to remember that most of the Grand Canyon campgrounds, even in the bottom of the Grand Canyon, have picnic tables. So I carried this thing, lugged it all over, and I used it once, and I wish I could have shaved that pound off. So my big mistakes were carrying this, uh, shouldn't have carried this and I had way too much fuel. I could have carried less water, but because I was kind of feeling responsible for the group, I carried extra. All, all of that all together was 52 pounds. That's with food and with water uh, and with snowshoes. So let me uh, buckle it up, do the last bit of cinching here. Okay, 35 pounds. What am I missing? My rain jacket and my camera and my tripod and the dang snowshoes. So that gives you an idea of what, how much weight I was carrying. Let's put this on. Easy peasy. This is pretty much what I backpacked with. This trip was a huge trip. It was a big challenge. This was my pack setup, and honestly, I was very happy with it. This Bridger pack, so good. Carrying 52 pounds for 50 miles was actually very comfortable. I never had sore, sho sore, sore shoulders, sore shoulders. I never had sore hips, sore back. That was my gear loadout. I hope that this was helpful for people, that uh, you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about what I took, I hope this video was helpful and fun. If you did enjoy it, please give it that thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed here at Backpacking TV. I'm Eric Hansen. I'm out of here. Oh,